Hi, it's Jason at Golf Principles here in Basingstoke and I had a request through the uh, YouTube site about understanding more about what swings work with different shafts. Now, we're going to talk about irons first of all because that's probably the easiest one to you know, work through. It's very simple, you have two schools in shafts, you have counterbalance shafts with a weight under the grip, i.e. KBSC Taper, KBS Tour, Project X, those types of shafts. And you have the guys like Diamond Golds and the Modus shafts, which are non counterbalanced which means the weight is split pretty much even 50-50. So, understand this, when you have a golf swing that is a one plane golf swing or one axis swing, where it's much more rotational, the key is to keep the club head behind you and then getting in front of you. You want that club head releasing in front, you don't want to get it trapped underneath you. Now a two plane swing that works up and then works down, is that it's looking for a shadowing angle. So those guys tend to want a the tip that's more stable, because they tend to work the club up, then they go down, now they've got to release the hand and release the club. Tom Watson's a good example. Watson always used to have this drill where he would almost touch his forearms, that flash release. With his two plane swing coming in narrow, looking for some width, now he's got to release it. So someone like that needs a shaft that's stronger in the tip section so he can release it hard, without feeling like it's going to go left. Now if you look at someone who's a, who's a one plane or one axis swing, I guess McElroy you could class in that area, he's using pressure axes. Now that's why when he's rotating through the ball, he likes to feel the weight under the butt, the club head feels slightly lighter in comparison to the butt, he can turn through the ball, he can feel where the shaft is and the club head comes out in front. There is an argument, to look at say what Tigers do with Foley, is that most of the Tigers guys, you know, well, not most, some of them prefer Diamond Gold, which is unusual because he works on much more what I would call a rotational swing. So you could see Tiger eventually switching into a counterbalance shaft. There's another discussion with Tiger's driver why it's too light and it doesn't work for him because it's 67 grams and it's sort of, you know, like a little bit light on the weight and you can't feel it, which is why he gets those funky double cross shots. But coming back on track and the irons, if you're working on a one axis swing and you've got, should we say, longer than standard, upright golf clubs, you're in a hell of a bad place because if you're longer and upright, that's going to promote you more up and down. If you're going to work on rotation and you're getting it a bit more round the spine, then shorter, flatter clubs are going to work for you. But try and experiment with different shafts. You know, if you're in, the, say, a stiff curve, take a diamond gold out, S4 or S3, take a KBS, take a C-taper out, take a uh, Project X out and see which one feels the best. There's a definite communication between you and the club and then you've got to understand that. It's a two-way discussion. Whenever you're fitting somebody or when I'm fitting somebody, the numbers mean a lot. But it don't mean as much as the players feel. If the player can't feel it, he's not going to use it under pressure, he's not going to trust it. So when you're trying new products, is it talking to you? Can I feel where the club is? Do I understand what I'm trying to do with my golf swing? Hopefully you're with the coach as well when you're doing this process. So if you are looking for some reassurance, is that what you want me to do? If it is, great, because I can feel what I'm trying to do. If you go on a blind guess, that's exactly what it is, it's a blind guess. Try and get some science and some theory to deliver the right result for you. Process equals outcome. If you follow the process, you'll get the outcome as a given result. So a two-plane guy who's working much more up and down, say for instance, interestingly, Adam Scott, he's changed to what you'd call a, a KBS shaft, which is more of a, a one-plane type golf shaft, I think. And he's very much a two-plane action. So look at when he missed that shot on 17 where he pulled it low and left. Was that because the tip was a little bit softer and the butt was too heavy and then the club got out in front and did it flip on him because the shaft wasn't right? That's a, that's a big call, but hey, you've got to look at it and say maybe a stiffer tipped shaft would have kept the head more stable, maybe would have made it go less left. Ah, you know, who knows, right? It's a million dollar question. But these are sort of performance parameters that the best in the world look at because one shot can win or lose your tournament as Adam Scott proved in the Open. You've got to look at every opportunity that you can maximise your score. So when you're working on a new product or you're trying to work on something with your golf game, 
have you got the right shaft for you? Have you got a shaft that you can feel that you can rotate from the ball or you can release it more? Whatever it is you're looking to do, can that shaft do what you want it to do? If the answer is no, come back to the start, go through the process, counterbalance, non-counterbalance, which one do I like? It's, it's a Marmite discussion. You either like it or you don't, there's no in the middle. Right? So you're one way or the other. Once you understand that process, then you can look at which one in that group is the best for me. Okay, so have a look at that. Any more questions, please message me and we'll come back.